Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain. Today we have with us Joel Kieser, a master's student at South Dakota State University. So Joel, before we start, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me on today. Well, I grew up in Illinois. I grew up on a commercial swine and grain operation, a family operation. Um, so worked with pigs all my life knew that I wanted to work with animals. Um, pretty sure I didn't want to work with people because working with animals is usually a lot more simple. Um, so based on that, wanting to work with animals, decided to get a degree in animal science. Um, so went to community college there in Illinois for two years. Um, and then I transferred to University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign and received a bachelor's in animal science from there. So while I was there, um, had the opportunity to do some undergraduate research, um, started thinking about grad school and eventually decided that I wanted to and got in, got in contact with Dr. Crystal Levesque um, at South Dakota State University, where I am now doing my master's in swine nutrition with her. Um, so really I decided to do that because I wanted to, I wanted to work with swine. That's what I grew up with. That's what I knew. That's what I enjoyed, um, enjoyed the nutrition piece. Um, and then as well, I just, I wanted to work with sows because I really feel like there's a lot there that we don't understand. I'm going to need for a lot more research in that area. So it's kind of where I grew up and where I'm at now. So I read that study you sent about supplementing a yeast-based postbiotic and sow diets. Would you mind telling us about that work that you've been doing over there? So this class of feed additives, um, postbiotics, probiotics, they act through microorganisms in the gut. They act to bring their effect through several mechanisms, depending on what you're looking at. So one of them with helping to prevent disease, how do they help prevent disease? Well, when they colonize in your gut, they actually can outcompete pathogenic microorganisms and colonize your gut so that the pathogenic microorganisms that you ingest, maybe they make it through your stomach or somehow when pathogenic micro microorganisms from your food or however they get in your gut, pass through, they can't actually colonize and, you know, cause gut dysbiosis or other disorders um, because you have those beneficial organisms actually protecting your gut. Um, other ways they can, they can help protect your gut from disease is by producing things like short chain fatty acids. Um, we know that colonocytes or the cells in the colon, um, the number, their number one preferred energy substrate is butyrate, which is one of the short chain fatty acids. And so when you have microorganisms that produce that, um, they provide energy for your clonocytes, which helps them to better do their better, um, do their function. So there's several, so through several of those mechanisms, that's how we would sort of expect, um, the live microorganisms to, to act. Well, with a postbiotic, we're not feeding live microorganisms. So how could that actually help? And how could yeast postbiotics, like we looked at in our trial, actually help? Well, one of the components that we look at is the cell wall. So the cell wall essentially acts like a, acts like a prebiotic. So there's sort of these cell wall components that are not, not easily digested. So think fiber, and these can pass into the large intestine and actually stimulate the growth of beneficial microorganisms. So there's mannins, mannanolytosaccharides, different of these cell wall components in this yeast postbiotic that can actually help stimulate beneficial microorganisms in the gut to that mechanism. Um, the second, the second area we think of is in with effector molecules or signaling molecules, and these can um, sort of help with maybe some nutrient digestibility by helping signal in the small intestine, but these are less clear than sort of the prebiotic mechanisms. So in this study, um, we did this study um, in Morris in Minnesota at the university, at the university uh, research center. And we had between two groups of, we combined two groups of sows. Um, and basically we used 53 sows. We fed the yeast postbiotic for the last 35 days of gestation. Um, and then throughout lactation to the sows, we supplemented this yeast postbiotic in the sow diets. We supplemented it at 10 pounds per ton in their gestation diet and four pounds per ton in their lactation diet. So to adjust for feed intake, so they'd be intaking approximately the same amount of yeast postbiotic. So then 
we looked at sow reproductive performance, we looked at sow weight, we looked at sow feed intake, um, and then we also tracked the piglets through the nursery phase. And we didn't, we never fed the yeast postbiotic to the piglets. So any effect seen in this trial um, would be from the sow. So looking at growth performance, looking at sow reproductive performance, we really didn't see any differences um, in born alive or any of those reproductive um, performance statistics. We did see some improvement in sow feed intake, lactation average daily feed intake, uh, but no difference really in sow weight or body condition. Um, moving into sort of the suckling period, there was no difference in growth of the piglets based on treatment during the suckling period. Um, and then in the nursery, overall, we didn't see any performance benefits. One interesting thing that we did notice um, was in the first week after we weaned them, we noticed that there was a reduced percentage of piglets that lost weight when the coming from sows that were supplemented with the yeast postbiotic. So um, basically, when when you wean, the piglets go through stress, right? You want them to get started eating, get started growing as soon as you can after weaning. And so having them lose weight after weaning, it's going to happen. They go through stress, right? They stop eating for a while. But to minimize the number of piglets that actually lose weight, very positive. Um, and seeing them get turned around, started eating, um, started gaining weight, which is what they're there for. So that was an interesting thing we noticed. Um, and so I think this product... Um, with some more investigation can really help provide some tools for navigation around that stress of weaning in the piglet's life. Awesome. So I just wanted to ask a few questions about um, like postbiotics in general, because I think I had one uh, episode in the past where I talked about it, but like you said, it's kind of like new and it's like it's kind of coming into the, the prebiotic probiotic. So like what kind of sets those apart from prebiotics and probiotics. Yeah. So like I said, a portion of the, you know, a yeast postbiotic sort of preparation or product um, is actually going to act like a prebiotic, right? And so there's, there's sort of some gray area there is like, okay, so do we classify this as, what do we actually classify this as? So the difference between a postbiotic and a probiotic is pretty, pretty stark. So no live microorganisms in the postbiotic a probiotics definition is live microorganisms. Um, as far as a prebiotic and a postbiotic, I think a prebiotic, um, you know, just the fibrous component, just just that indigestible component, whereas a postbiotic is going to have more of some of the components of the cytoplasm of the microorganism. And I think that would be the main difference that would lie therein. But again, some gray area and they act pretty similarly. Gotcha. Well, thank you for coming on the show and I appreciate you um, taking the time to share all these results with us. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this episode and we are constantly on the lookout for the latest updates in swine nutrition. And if you have a swine nutrition related research trial that you would be able to share on our podcast, please send an email to nutritionblackbelt at swineit.com and we would love to talk about your research. See you later.